Hello everyone, I'm swiftly moving on to the video, and I'm ranking the swords from the first C in Block's Fruits. Enjoy watching. The Cutlass is a basic sword available for purchase at 1,000 Robux in the game. It offers a Z moveset, including Quite Rush, which allows the user to dash forward to attack. It also features an X moveset called Air Slash, enabling the user to deliver short-ranged air slashes to damage the enemy. This sword is considered useless due to its poor damage capabilities. The short-ranged moves are ineffective and quite easy for opponents to dodge. Therefore, I'm adding Cutlass to the F tier. The dual katana can be purchased in the game for 12,000 rubox from the Pirate Village. It utilizes the Z key for the Whirlwind moveset, which is a cone-shaped attack used for knockback. The Tornado moveset is activated using the X key, delivering an inverted cone-shaped attack to damage the enemy. Despite having a superior range compared to the Iron Mace, it does not deal significant damage to enemies, leading to its placement in the D tier of the Block's Fruit Sword tier list. Consequently, Dual Katana goes into the D tier. The sword is available on Pirate's Island for 1,000 Robux. It possesses the same movesets as the Cutlass and is equally ineffective in terms of the damage it inflicts on enemies or the range of its attack. Hence, it is categorized in the F tier. Similarly, I'm placing Katana in the F tier. This sword, the Iron Mace, is an uncommon weapon available for purchase at 25,000 Robux on the Pirate's Island within Block's Fruits. It offers a Mace Smash Z moveset, allowing the user to strike the ground and damage nearby foes. Its X combo, the Killer Combo, enables the user to execute aerial attacks that damage nearby enemies. Despite being a suitable sword for beginners, the Iron Mace falls short in various aspects. It lacks effectiveness in close combat, is not ideal for battles, and deals minimal damage, hence earning it a spot in the D tier. As a result, Iron Mace will be classified in the D tier. The Saw is a common sword that can be acquired by defeating the raid boss, the Saw. Its moveset, Consecutive Slashes, permits the user to execute seven slices forward, potentially stunning and hitting anything in its path. The second moveset, Execution, involves the player spinning forward and dealing significant damage. This sword's attacks have infinite range, but a small hitbox. Additionally, the attacks are short-ranged. Also, Shark Saw is positioned in the C tier. This uncommon sword, available for purchase at Frozen Village for 60,000 Robux, possesses two significant movesets. Its Air Slashes Barrage allows wielders to carve through the air, creating four distinct blue slashes. In contrast, Violent Rush charges opponents, leaving a distinct green trail behind. While the moveset offers a commendable range and causes substantial damage, it has its drawbacks. The Air Slash's move has a notably limited range, and executing Violent Rush results in considerable end lag. The Triple Katana is a suitable choice for both novice players and those looking for a sword suitable for farming. Despite being a cost-effective option that delivers impressive slashes, its moves come with certain limitations, particularly the short range of Air Slashes and the significant delay in executing Violent Rush. Moreover, Triple Katana is placed in the B tier. The Dual Bladed Sword, a rare find available at Skyland's Master Sword Dealer for 400,000 belly in the game, boasts two distinct movesets. Firstly, the Assassinate move, initiated with the Z key, propels the user forward, spinning and striking everything along its path. Alternatively, the Raging Wind move, triggered by pressing the X key, unleashes three destructive tornadoes. It's recommended to employ the X move when in close proximity to the target. Although this sword deals significant damage, it lacks air attack capabilities and lacks stunning moves. Additionally, its effectiveness is limited to elemental users. Similarly, Dual-Headed Blade is categorized in the C tier. The pipe is a rare weapon acquired from the Frozen Village for 100,000 Rubox within the game. It features two movesets. Rage Combo, which delivers multiple strikes on a single target, and Earth Smash, effectively tossing enemies into the air with substantial damage. While suitable for PvP encounters and executing combos, it lacks effectiveness in various aspects, such as farming. 
The weapon also suffers from limited range, as its movesets demand close proximity to the enemy for effective attacks. Likewise, Pipe takes its place in the C tier. A rare sword found in Bloxfruits Fruits can be acquired for 750,000 Rubox in Magma Village from the Living Skeleton. The Soul Beam moveset allows the user to fire a high speed ball that stuns the enemy for 1.5 seconds, hitting multiple targets. With the Soul Slash's move, the user slashes the enemy multiple times, causing stun effects, although these slashes have a very limited range. These movesets can be utilized as a combo, although starting with Soul Cane might not be ideal due to its small hitbox. However, it can be used if the enemy is already stunned. Ranked in the A tier, this sword holds several commendable qualities, such as high combo potential and the ability to stun enemies for a prolonged period. It's well suited for farming and pairs excellently with sword mains. It can counter dark combos, but it requires skill. Not categorized in the S tier due to its small hitbox, precise aiming requirements, short range, and immunity of chop to its damage. Hence, Soul Cane finds its spot in the A tier. The Trident is a rare blade sword akin to other swords in having two movesets. The Trident Throw, operated with the Z key, allows the user to hurl the Trident attached to a rope towards the target, although it inflicts minimal damage and has limited range. Water Pulse, the second moveset, generates a small shockwave surrounding the user, moderately pushing the enemy back and causing medium damage. This sword is beneficial for novices and decent for grinding, assisting in taking down foes and unwanted players in the game. However, it falls short due to its limited range and is overshadowed by more effective swords available in the game. Furthermore, Trident is situated in the B tier. The Warden Sword is a rare sword available by defeating the Chief Warden in prison. The Z key moveset offers a multi target slash, allowing the user to create blue shockwaves, pushing enemies back. The X key moveset, Tornado Slash, launches a tornado at the enemy. While this sword demands low mastery skills and delivers faster moves with an area of effect, it falls short in combos, farming, and PvP. Its damage output and range are subpar. Warden Sword is ranked in the C tier. The legendary Basento Sword was introduced in the game's first update and can be upgraded to the Basento Fi 2 by defeating the raid boss Greybeard. To acquire this sword, players must reach level 250 and purchase it for 1 million Robux. This high damage sword possesses Quake's abilities. Its Windbreaker moveset enables the user to unleash four air slashes using the Z key, knocking down enemies within its range. Additionally, the Quake Sphere moveset releases a powerful translucent sphere dealing significant damage. While the sword excels in damage output and multi-target grinding, it suffers from extended cooldown periods after moves, lacks stunning moves crucial for PvP, and is relatively expensive, placing it in the A tier. However, the V2 update introduced in the game's second update significantly improved the sword. With enhanced move sets for AOE damage, the X move can effectively ensnare enemies while the Z move knocks them out within its impressive range. Despite these improvements, the update still falls short in PvP and lacks effective combos. In addition, Basento is classified in the A tier. The legendary Pole Sword was introduced in Update 14 and can also be upgraded to a second form. The Pole's first form has a 16% drop chance and can be obtained from the Thunder God on Upper Island. Regarding its movesets, the Explosive Clouds releases an invisible cloud into the air, generating electric thunder upon hitting a target. This inflicts good damage to the enemy and stuns them. The Lightning Rain moveset allows the user to swing the Pole, creating small clouds that release three lightning bolts upon hitting a target. Considered a middling sword, it's ranked in the B tier of the Blox Fruit Sword tier list 2023. The stuns are average, dealing decent damage. However, this sword falls short in AoE attacks, often having delayed strikes that are easy for enemies to evade. Pole First Form falls into the B tier. The Saber is a decent sword classified under the legendary category, but it can be easily upgraded to a significantly superior version, the Saber V2. 
It's highly preferred by saber experts in the game due to its exceptional damage output. Obtaining this sword comes with no mastery or level requirements. Players need to acquire 1 million bounties and then defeat another player in the game with the same skill to become saber equipped. Its deadly rush moveset allows the user to obliterate everything in their path. The triple slash moveset enables the user to launch three air slashes at their enemy, causing substantial damage. The user can also dispatch dragon heads towards the enemy, dealing significant damage through air slashes. Overall, it stands as a formidable sword, delivering substantial damage to opponents. Finally, Saber is positioned in the S tier. The video concludes here. In your opinion, which is the best sword in the first C? Write in the comments and let's discuss. See you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe.